Welcome to the WP Tonic This Week in WordPress and SaaS podcast, where Jonathan Denwood interviews the leading experts in WordPress, e-learning, and online marketing to help WordPress professionals launch their own SaaS. Welcome back, folks, to the WP Tonic This Week in WordPress and SaaS. We've got a great guest here. We've got Jeff Cross here. He is the media director of the ISSSA. Um, we're going to be talking about e-learning um, e-learning marketing, as I call it, and about WordPress and how you combine the two together. Um, it should be a great show. Also, I'm on a winner here. I've managed to actually pronounce Jeff's name without totally butchering it, which some of my poor guests over the past few weeks have had to put up with my total inability to do. With grace and humility, they have put up with that. Jeff, Jeff seems up for it. He's already had to put up with a full start, but he seems up for it. So, Jeff, can you quickly, in about 10, 15 seconds, just do a quick intro um, about yourself and what you do at the ISSA? You bet. Let me start my timer. There we go. So, I used to be a journalist. I worked for a newspaper many years ago, got into cleaning so I could raise my family. Uh, wrote for one of the magazines I now manage and eventually became the editor of that, Clean Facts, and eventually ended up at ISSA, where I now head up three different publications. And I run a media team here. We produce print, digital, video, all that. And that's where I'm at, and that's 20 seconds. Oh, no, that's great. You've done excellent. I've got my great co host, Kurt. Kurt, would you like to introduce yourself to the listeners and viewers? Absolutely, Jonathan. My name is Kurt Von Annen. I own an agency called Manana Nomas. Uh, I specialize in learning and membership websites and uh, getting things done on time and under budget. That's great. Um, before we go into the main beat and potatoes of this great interview, we've got a couple of messages from our major sponsors. We'll be back in a few moments, folks. Are you looking for ways to make your content more engaging? Sensei LMS by Automatic is the original WordPress solution for creating and selling online courses. Sensei's new interactive blocks can be added to any WordPress page or post. For example, interactive videos let you pause videos and display quizzes, lead generation forms, surveys, and more. For a 20% off discount for the tribe, just use the code WPTONIC, all one word, when checking out and give Sensei a try today. Hi there, folks. It's Jonathan Denwood here, and I want to tell you about one of our great sponsors, and that's Zolo.com. If you've got a WordPress website, a membership website, and you're looking to link it with a great financial management package, Zolo can provide this solution. So all your bookkeeping needs are done through Zolo. If you need new inbox email functionality and you don't want to pay the high charges that Google will charge you, Zolo offers a great email inbox platform. They've got over 50 apps and services that all integrate fantastic with WordPress at great value levels and they almost always offer a fully functioning free product as well. So it's just amazing value. Also, if you're a WordPress developer or agency owner, Zolo are looking for great partnerships in the WordPress space. To get all this information, all you have to do, folks, is just go over to Zolo.com and they have the products that you're looking for. Thank you so much, Zolo, for supporting WP Tonic and the Machine Membership Shows. It's much appreciated. We're coming back, folks. I just want to point out we've got some great deals from the sponsors, plus we've got a curated list of recommendations of the best WordPress plugins and services for your WordPress website. To get all these goodies, all you have to do is go over to WPTonic slash deals, WPTonic slash deals, and you can get the special offers and a list of curated recommendations so you don't have to roam the internet and waste a whole day trying to find the best solutions for your WordPress-powered website. What more could you ask for? Uh, um, so, Jeff, um, so let's go into a bit more detail. Um, so how, how, what led you 
to the ISSA and you I was really impressed with what I consider your training and e-learning marketing activities. You seem to be doing everything right on my list of what people should be doing if they've got an association or they're trying to build an online community. You really seem, I was very impressed with your activities. So um, what led you to doing all this activity online and is it you know did you what's been the process basically sure um so you know i got started many years ago where it was all about print uh before the internet you know back back in the day so my focus was always producing magazines newspapers and magazines was what i, was what I did eventually as time went on you know the websites come out the blogs the forums uh, newsletters and all that. And uh, that's really when things got interesting because that was where we had to open our, our broaden our, our focus on how to bring content to those that need it. So where we're at today and how I got here is through that, through, uh, the magazines I worked for, a uh, clean facts, clean and maintenance management being acquired by ISSA over the years. And we also have a member magazine called ISSA today. And it's just, it's not print. It's, it's everything. Like you mentioned, Jonathan. We do the digital, the websites, the social media is now a big part of what we do. And, and my success with everything and with the team is we just look, look at what the, is going on in the industry. You know, what are they talking about on LinkedIn, on Facebook? What, who's saying what on Twitter? And we try to avoid politics, of course. But, you know, what, what is it that people need? What do they want? Uh, it's about networking, whether it's face to face, you know, social networking isn't new. Um, Back in the day, it was over coffee at a at your at a diner. That was social networking. Well, now it's electronic mostly, but just just listening to the industry. Uh, we serve our members first at ISSA. That's our focus. But we're also responsible as a global trade association, so uh, as a voice for the industry. So we represent everyone. And so you'll see on the programs I do not just ISSA members, but others involved in the industry. So you know, it's just about. What is needed and how can we deliver content to fill that need? So you you do a podcast, I'm correct, and you do a lot of um, interviews and news about the industry on YouTube. Has this been a has this been a long learning exercise to find the right content, the right fit for your audience? And what has been some of the stumbling blocks along that journey? Okay. Um, to find the content, it's just about paying attention to what people are talking about. And and also that we're very visible, ISSA is in our media team. So people come to us, hey, I've got an idea. We listen to it and we get a pitch. Sometimes it's about products. And of course, that's a different category. That's not what I do. But if it's about concept, thought leadership, then we talk it out and we create an article, a video, a podcast. So we have, we have different platforms. Uh, we do, you know, like I said, the print magazines, um, my video programming. I don't do a traditional voice only podcast. We do the videos like we're doing today. And then we create a, also a voice podcast from that as well. So we have straight talk, take five with clean facts, ISSA alerts. We have GBAC, a TV, a biotalk program there. Uh, just so many different ways to reach different segments of the market. But we, we listen, we watch, uh, we get pitches. Um, you know, people come our way with a great idea and we develop it. And then we see if it works. And we, what's nice about digital, as you know, is we can track how many views you get, how long they're watching it. Is it a dud or a win? And that'll drive our next topic as well. So um, a, lot of, a lot of good stuff happening. Everyone wants to know what are the new trends? What's new? Well, it's changing every day. And it's just about um, taking care of those you serve. You know, good, taking care of those, for I to say, our members, our members for them is taking care of their buildings and those that they clean for. Right. Over to you, Kurt. Thanks, Jonathan. Um, Jeff, what do you think would be like some of the commercial challenges that ISSA would face in 2023 and, and the immediate future? Okay. Um, you know, as any organization has the same challenge, they all have challenges. We have the labor issues trying to find good help. I think at ISSA, we have a solid team of professionals uh, to serve our members. But challenges would be a little different from traditional companies. You know, a traditional company has to have a, 
uh, a profit and has to answer to shareholders or or those stakeholders. With ISSA, we're a nonprofit, so our focus is serving our members and maybe spending money that other companies would not to get something done. But every day is crazy busy, you know. Um, I live by the calendar, and I think all of us at ISSA and the challenges we face is getting it done every day, just because there's so much to do, and we have so many projects: uh, the e-learning projects, the the different uh, workshops and seminars, and all the events we go to, and ISSA Show North America. Uh, the challenge is. We need clones, and that's not a reality. So we just work hard to get it done. Yeah, it, it, as a follow up to that, you had mentioned, you know, finding people, right? And mm-hmm. I talk to a lot of folks that say finding people, finding people. What, what are some tools, kind of at your disposal, that you think kind of help filter people in or, or get people to find find you for you know the attention? Sure. So for me, the only hiring I do is for the media team. And I've hired a few editors and experts over the years. And I find them not the traditional way, not, you know, putting up a help wanted sign, you get all kinds of applicants, but I use social media. I go on LinkedIn and I look and talk to people. I invite people to apply and my apply is just tell me you're interested and we'll talk. And I've got some great people that way um, that didn't come through your traditional online Mm -hmm. Uh, hiring platforms. Um, those still have value and I get if you got to fill a position. But I hire, I look for personality. I, I You know, it's kind of like in our industry, do you hire someone who can actually clean well or do you hire someone with the right attitude you can train to do the cleaning? So for me, it's it's about is the person able to network and talk to others, represent the brand as a person, as a good person? Or are they the technical? You know, I spell every word right. Those are important things. You know, the, it, we are editors, we are writers, but to me, more importantly is what are you like as a person who's going to represent the brand? And so you start looking for people like that and you find there's some really good applicants out there and they're looking for a challenge. They're looking for something more than a job. So that's what I do. Cool. I kind of like that. It's, it's the second time that you've mentioned using social media <laughs> socially instead of like a billboard. Right. So, so there's yeah. a, there's a core message there. Uh, yeah, and like after we're done today, um, I think I'm connected with Jonathan on on LinkedIn. Uh, Kurt, I don't know who we are, we are, but I'm going to find you. And that's I'm on I LinkedIn, babe. <laughs> Every, everyone I work with, you know, if I interview eight people for an article, I don't need to do it, but I do. I go on LinkedIn and I connect, and mm. you know, it's it's a network to me. That's LinkedIn is a great resource for business, and of course, we do Twitter and Facebook and. Mm. Uh, TikTok, you know, no, I don't do TikTok, but I have a young editor who's smart that does that for us. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Jonathan, can I toss it back to you? Yeah, sure. Just a quick, before I go on to the next question, would I be right in also saying, Jeff, you know, obviously um, it's, a non, it's a non-commercial association. So to some extent, it's driven by subscriptions. So obviously we're going... It looks like we're entering a more difficult business cycle in the next couple of years. So what you're doing online, do you think it's crucial, uh, a crucial tool to keep people, to keep their, them willing to pay the subscriptions because it really shows you're giving value for that subscription? Absolutely. Any as- association has members and they pay an annual fee or or some type of fee to be involved. Every industry has them. And for us, we are the one for the cleaning industry. And so we have to add value. We are always talking about what can we give members, what can we give them more of or new products. And from my department, media, it's about content, videos. People get those um, as far as being part of the industry, but as members, they get priority. So we we try to focus on our members first. Um, but yeah, it's it's always a challenge to keep giving more and coming up with good ideas, but that's our focus. And with everything ISSA offers, you know, there's so much for everyone from HR benefits to medical to um, uh, the e-learning products, the value of clean platform we have. Um, all those things add up to it's it's more than a yearly uh, payment. You know, to be along to a trade association, almost every industry, unless maybe you're a doctor or a lawyer, is very inexpensive. It's more about what you get than what you pay. Right. So it's kind of linked. So um, obviously, we have a focus on WordPress. You know, our audience are developers, implementers, designers, mm-hmm. entrepreneurs. 
I do another podcast that's about membership and about e-learning and learning management systems. So we've got a very folk, uh, diverse audience, um, but they all make their living online, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, so how important, for, first of all, you know, do you, do you kind of recognise the concept? Um, I'm not sure I've made it up, or I'm sure I heard it from some other people. I'm a terrible copier, Jeff. Uh, um, so e-learning marketing, maybe... Do you identify that statement and maybe you can see what in your mind, what is e-learning marketing? Only a small question. And the yeah. and second question, obviously there's a lot of SaaS platforms um, aimed at associations. There, there, there's a lot of choices about what your main digital contact platform. You utilise WordPress. I'm just interested in... Um, what do you see as the benefits of utilising WordPress compared to some of the SaaS-aimed platforms, specifically aimed at associations? So only two small questions, Jeff. Yeah, that's a, that's a long one there. Let me think. Um, so as far as e-learning with, you know, I'm not... I'm not involved or in charge of the some of the e-learning that we do at ISSA. We have another department, an education department for that. If you go to ISSA.com, there's an online learning center that has everything there for members and non-members to some of it included with membership. Yeah, I, I kind of see it as an overlap. I see your activity yeah, is yeah. that you're the public face that kind of shows what the kind of e-learning you kind of offer that kind of induces them into the more structured e-learning. Would I... Am I on the right track there? You are. I was going to mention next that with what I do with media is we provide content. E-learning is just about finding content online, like newspapers. I get print subscriptions delivered to my driveway and my friends think I'm crazy. But I do like some things in print to open it up and look and hold. Mm -hmm. But I also do the electronic versions. E-learning to me is anything you learn online or electronically uh, think of books and books we read now. It's all about Kindle and, and I don't buy books anymore, but I do that. But for our, our ISSA members, the e-learning is important, whether it's a full workshop, several days of learning online, or maybe it's, it's doing an online course of some kind. But for media, we provide electronic products that are part of this that are provided to the industry, whether it's video or podcast or something digital as far as a newsletter. To your second part of your question, yeah, we use WordPress for everything. We're a WordPress platform company. Uh, I think everything we do at ISSA is, is, as far as I know, is WordPress. Don't ask me to build a site or know how to fix anything, but I do know how to publish on WordPress, and we have experts that do that. So it's it's a we just re, rebranded one site uh, for Clean Facts. It's a WordPress site. Uh, I don't know what it'd be like with a different type of platform, but it made it easy to do. And it seems like all of our young, smart editors, they, they feel good in that platform. So uh, I'm all for that. Um, SAS, don't ask me about that. I couldn't really talk about that too much. But I, I do know we have a platform for our association that deals with membership and all the moving parts with that. But there is a, you know, there is a lot of choice, you know, for the more marketing or retainage. You could look at Wix. You could look at Squarespace. Mm-hmm. What, why do you stay? Is it is it driven by just the popularity of WordPress? Because you said your editors are comfortable, but is it also is the element of of you've got more ownership, more control over sure. your own content? Does that appeal to you? That is a big deal for us, and that is part of it. And the fact that it works well with so many different platforms as well uh, just seems to be the go to for us. All right, we're going to go for our break. Jeff's been very patient with me. Uh, um, He seems a very patient individual. Uh, um, We will be back in a few seconds, folks. Hey, it's Spence from LaunchFlows.com. If you've been looking for a fast and easy way to create powerful sales funnels on WordPress, then look no further than LaunchFlows. In just minutes, you can easily create instant registration, upsells, downsells, order bumps, one-click checkouts, one-time offers, 
custom thank you pages, and best of all, no coding is required. For as little as $50 per year, you can own and control your entire sales funnel machine with Launch Flows. Get your copy today. This podcast episode is brought to you by Lifter LMS, the leading learning management system solution for WordPress. If you or your client are creating any kind of online course, training-based membership website, or any type of e-learning project, Lifter LMS is the most secure, stable, well-supported solution on the market. Go to LifterLMS.com and save 20% at checkout with coupon code PODCAST20. That's PODCAST20. Enjoy the rest of your show. We're coming back. We've listened to a couple more of our great sponsors. I also want to point out, folks, that if you're looking for great hosting on WordPress for your membership, for your e-learning platform, why don't you have a look at WP Tonic? We provide everything to make the experience of building a community membership website really easy on WordPress from great hosting that's really aimed at your needs to providing email functionality, video hosting, everything in one platform from people that are experienced in helping you or your clients come over. Um, if you're looking for a great partnership, go over and go over to WP Tonic slash partners, WP Tonic slash partners, and see what we can build together. So um, over to you, Kurt. Hey, Jonathan. Um, Jeff, one of the questions that we have, and I'm interested now how I want to rephrase this. Uh, I know that you're not in charge of the learning division, right? But is there is there something in the company where you guys repurpose the learning content and use it in a marketing capacity? Have yeah. you seen a way to use that and possibly grow membership or leadership through through repurposed content in the learning area? Yeah, I think I think so. We we often take some of our our education material and create editorial content out of it and use that that way. Cross sharing or sharing content across brands platforms is important to us. So yeah, we do that. Um, we have a topic somewhere in ISSA and do we just let it sit there as that product? Well, we might, but if it's of interest to others, we might then take and create a video out of that or something in print. Um, but you know, we, we do have certain things we keep just for members and um, we listen to what they want as well. So if there's something that they need, then we're going to develop it. And even though I'm not involved with that department directly, I do. We do all work together. So we all, we talk, we have meetings, and we we figure out what is needed, and we provide it. So yeah, cross sharing or promoting is a big part of our strategy. And on social media, you know, we we're like, what can we do with this? Well, we could send an email, and we do that, or we could do a big social media promotion maybe spend some money on a promotion as well as just organically. Yeah, I love that answer because I have kind of a corporate background and I can remember working for larger companies where things were completely siloed and yep, there'd be siloed. a complete line of content coming out from one department and another line of content coming out from a different department. And you would think to yourself, you know, why did I spend half a million dollars of budget when this content's already over here, you know? The word silo gets mentioned a lot and we, we try to avoid those. Yes. Excellent. Excellent. Um, Jonathan? So it's kind of follow through question. Obviously, you have a budget. You know, you're, the, you're responsible as head of media for the, for the association. Now, the association is driven by subscription. You know, obviously, you've got short, medium, long-term objectives. The medium are to get more subscriptions. How? But a lot of your activity, it can't be directly, well, we did this promotion, we did this show, we did this, and this had a direct increase in subscriptions or had a, a, de- a direct increase in people Resubscribing, a lowing of churn in the subscription. It must be. How do you, how do you kind of measure the effect effectiveness of 
the programming and the outreach that you're doing? Or is that an ongoing discussion between you and your chief financial officer? Yeah, it's an ongoing discussion. And we have a, a sales department that works on this as well. So our, our media brands are not run on paid subscription. So maybe that's a clarification we needed. We provide our media products to qualified industry professionals. We are supported by advertising. So with our magazines, our online, our, our videos, you'll see advertising in those, much like this program here, if you have sponsors for your own program. And they pay a fee to be part of our brands. And the reason it works is when we show, well, this video we did on this topic, um, produce 4,200 views uh, that that went as long as your sponsor message. So the branding's there. And then we have our webcast, which has sponsorships and direct leads tied to that. So different ways of sponsorships that provide value to those who are supporting us. And then the association, of course, is based on annual subscriptions or annual um, membership fees and other things we do as well, other products we sell. So many moving parts like any organization. But for media, it's about supported by advertising. So that's why we have a church and state approach. You know, our editorial content is about editorial, not products. And we have the ads around that to support it. So that's a really good combination, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Because that kind of eases some of the pressure from the subscription side, doesn't it? Because it, it's a lot of the finance of, the, of what you do is coming from your sponsorship. Is it very difficult to get the right sponsorship um, partners, though, that got the right, sure. the right attitude towards it all? I think it's a, it's, it's a win-win for everyone, and our sponsors see the value. So if you have a product to sell or a service to sell, you want to be in front of people who are buying, right? And that's our audience. So we qualify our, our subscribers. They're business owners, managers who are purchasing products that the sponsors are selling. And so if you have, uh, some of our videos have done very well. We've had um, 8, 10, 20,000 views on some of them. You know, those are people in the industry. You don't have, you don't have teenagers watching those. You don't have um, retired people who are on a boat watching those. You have people in the industry watching those, uh, people who are buying the products. So. Um, it's, you know, if I have something to sell, if I have the best widget in the world for $25, I want people who want that widget to watch the, the products that it, that's in. So that's our, that's our goal. And, and our also, goal. and also they get, they get the benefit of association with the association in a way, because you are, sure. there is a kind of transfer of state, you know, this product, we, they are, we are allowing them on our platform you are transferring some of your credibility to the sponsor partners, aren't you? Yes, yes, obviously. And sometimes things don't mix properly and it doesn't work, but uh, for the most part, it's a good relationship. Over to you, Kurt. I get to ask the fun question, Jeff. Uh, if you had a time machine and you could just push a button and roll back to the beginning of your career, what advice would you give yourself? I would tell myself to buy Google stock and Apple stock. Um, maybe some Yahoo. No. So good question. Fun, fun question. I would say I would tell myself to focus on the big picture and the small stuff. Don't sweat it. In my early days, I sweated the small stuff. Thought I had to do everything. And you get to this point in your career. It's like, well, What's the big picture? It's, it's, you know, the relationships, the making things happen that make a bigger difference. Um, sometimes I would choose in the media brands I worked on to cover things that I thought were important or of interest. And that might be true sometimes, but I think I would tell myself to talk to others and ask them what should we should do. Talk to the readers, the audience and ask them, what do you want to see us do? And that's something I think I would tell myself. I'd work with smarter people, you know, I think back then I wouldn't admit it that I wasn't the smartest one, but now I will do that. Uh, you know, we learn as we get older. I would tell myself to surround myself by smarter people, let them grow. And, you know, that's, that's a smart move to work with people who know more than you. You know, at this point in my life, I could run a roofing company. I don't know how to do a roof, but I would hire the right people and it would work. So that's what I would do. Just things like that. And I would buy Apple. 
<laughs> by Apple. Mm-hmm. I think about, um, you know, the three faces on this podcast and we all show a little bit of seasoning, right? <laughs> um, one of the things that I think about, because you had mentioned print and you had mentioned some other things, and, and I used to work in some of those industries myself, is I think about the adoption rate of how I digitized myself. Like, so, so how I adopted, like, I always thought of myself as an early adopter of MySpace and social platforms and things, but I was a little bit slow coming off of print and going digital. How, how do you feel that that approach helped you in your, yeah. in your rise? Great point. Uh, Kurt, I think everyone did that. We see all the newspapers out there who are no longer around because they didn't adopt digital. I, I yeah. think, I think if I could tell myself when the first website went up, do you know, stay ahead of this, make this a focus, then we'd be ahead. We're doing, we're doing great with digital. You know, we've, mm. I think everyone's done some catch up, um, but we still do print. We do fewer pages in print and more digital. Our revenue is shifting that way. But uh, yeah, it's it's something that I you see these newspapers going out of business now, um, and some are not. Some are doing the subscription digital model, uh, like where I live here in Columbus, Ohio, the Dispatch. You know, they they I think without knowing too much about them, I subscribe, but they do a digital model that works, and they still do print, but much more digital. So yeah, that's that's something important to do. And if you miss the boat, the boat's gone. Yeah, it's hard to catch up. Like if you get too far behind, it's really hard yeah. to get back with it. Jonathan, yeah, what do you to throw at it? Yeah, I've got a follow-up for your question. You know, I would imagine that um, trade, uh, trade um, in physical trade um, meetups, you know, um, conferences are important. And, you know, obviously that got all disrupted by COVID. Um, obviously. COVID is thankfully to some extent in the rear mirror to some extent. Um, does it mean that the industry goes back to trade conferences face to face or, or is there, or is it more, it's coming back to some degree, but also the digital side is still going to be a lot more important. Can you see where I'm going with this question? I do. So we, in 2020, we pivoted from our live trade show to an online only one and it worked. That's what, that's what was there. Uh, and then 21, we went back to in person and I believe we also had that digital as well. And that worked, but people want to be with people. Um, you know, when it comes to a trade show, you want to go and physically talk to people and, and see products. Is there a place for a digital trade show? There is, but I know for myself, like with education, Sticking on a Zoom workshop all day long is really tough. Whereas you can be in a classroom engaging with people, seeing them, and it's much easier. So I do training as well for IICRC. It's for the carpet cleaning and restoration industry. And uh, I did not do any online training. I, I said, I'm going to wait and I'll do the classroom training when it's back. Uh, that's just how I prefer. I believe in digital. I believe in online e-learning and all that. But when it comes to trade shows and certain types of training, uh, put me in a classroom. Yeah, yeah I, I agree with you there. So what are, you know, when it comes to marketing and e-learning marketing and what are some of the websites, online resources, person, persons, maybe you can name a few people that you, that you know, you know what I mean. You know, there's certain mm-hmm. people you see if they're being interviewed on YouTube or they've got article or they've got something. If you, you spend a couple of minutes and you, you give it a read or you look at the video, that type of thing. So. Yeah, so I do spend a lot of time on social and looking at articles and videos there and YouTube as well, whatever catches your attention. I, I look at things as how can I can I get an idea for my brands from that? Back in the days, I'd walk through airports and look at magazine covers looking for ideas. You know, what, what are people talking about? What inspires me to do something? Uh, today, it's more, what do I see online with articles? I, uh, I do read some business books and there's a few out there that I like. There's one I remember called 12 Rules of Life by Jordan Peterson. Uh, fantastic mm-hmm. book, fantastic book. Uh, so many others out there, but, um, I read to see what can I do different or better. That's my focus. Unless I'm reading a John Grisham book, then it's to enjoy a good story. 
Um, like I mentioned, I, I get newspapers and magazines. Um, I receive a magazine called The Week. It's it's very short, concise, small bites of information. Uh, we're all too busy to spend a lot of time on large content pieces. Uh, when I look at a video and it's 20, 30 minutes, you know, that's an investment. Whereas if it's two or three or four, then it's more of a, I can do that. And I struggle with keeping things short on the video side myself. Uh, it's very tough to do. Um, but stay current, stay educated. Uh, education in the classroom is one thing, but uh, seeing what's going on around you and looking at social. I'm not talking about the silly stuff you know, we see on social media, but what can we learn from our peers? What are they doing? What are they talking about? What issues are they presenting? And that's where I spend my time. That's great, Jeff. So, Jeff, what's the best way people can find out more about you, what you're up to mm -hmm. online, basically, Jeff? Easiest way is our isa.com website. There's a media tab there, and you can see all of our brands, our podcasts, our videos. Uh, my email is jeffcross at isa.com. Very simple. It's my name at isa.com. I'm responsive. I will answer questions. Um, my cell phone number is in all our publications. So, you know, I get a lot of spam calls as well, but uh, I want to be available to the industry. And if anyone has a great idea that they think could be part of our programming, uh, just drop me an email, text me or call me and we'll talk. But isa.com is where you start for everything we've got. Yeah. And I want to say, folks, yeah. I want to say, folks, if you want to see organization that's utilizing e-learning on WordPress in a really effective way for their niche industry, really follow what Jeff's doing because I was really impressed with the volume and the strategy that Jeff is utilizing. That's why I asked him on the show because I was really impressed. So, Kirk, um, how can people really um, find out more about you and what you're up to. Well, just follow Jeff's lead, man. I am on LinkedIn. Uh, I'm the only Kurt Von Onnen, which makes me easy to find on LinkedIn. You type that in, I'm the only one there. So Kurt Von Onnen is it. Uh, also, anything that is Manana Nomas online typically belongs to me that's really well branded, mananonomas.com. Right. And I uh, just want to point out, we've got our roundtable show next week, folks. Um, we've got a join us at around 8.30 Pacific Standard Time live. We've got a really impressive panel. We, we've got Jason, the founder of WP Engine. Hopefully, we've got Jonathan World, who's just been the director of Gutenberg with um, WordPress.com. Um, we've got Kirk and we've got the regular panel as well. It should be a great round table show. We'll see you next week. Have a great week, folks. See you soon. Bye. Hey, thanks for listening. We really do appreciate it. Why not visit the Mastermind Facebook group? And also to keep up with the latest news, click wp-tonic.com forward slash newsletter. We'll see you next time.